everybody. My name is Marcus Amaker. I'm the Poet Laureate of Charleston, South Carolina, and the artist in residence here at the Gilliard Center. Um, this is another edition of Raising the Volume. Um, I'm excited to be here with my friend and um, compadre. <laughs> Gina Mocha is how I met her, but uh, she has a lot of different names and it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people, um, but it's all important uh, to this whole community. So this is one of the reasons I wanted you to be on here. Thank you. Um, so I guess just let's start sort of in the now and we can go back a bit. Okay. But um, I met you as a poet, so yes. I, I knew you strictly as a poet, like you would come to all of the op open mics and like set the mi microphone on fire and then leave. <laughs> and I'm like, who is that, you know? Um, but then I started to learn a lot more about you and your community work. So um, talk to us a little bit about uh, your mentorship pro program that you have. Okay, well, first, um, thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was honored when you asked me, so I was just like, okay, I'm coming to have a conversation with my friend. Mm -hmm, yeah, so, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> help take the edge off, you know. Yeah, it's all um, good. Even a poet, we still get, get our moments of fear or, you know, nervousness. So Yeah, it's all good. I'm really thankful. Um, yeah, so I started a Black Magic Girls mentoring program just as um, working with teens mm -hmm. and continuing what I've done when I was back home in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. So... Doing the work here, um, we're just based out of schools. Yeah. And so I would go and talk to them about just different issues that women uh, and challenges that women deal with. So okay. I do all kinds of um, hygiene and health and hygiene kits. Um, I just did a prestigious Pearls in honor of our new vice president, mm -hmm. Kamala Harris. Yeah, right on. You know, so we, I was able to, uh, with community supports, give 100 pearls, so be between earrings, necklace, and bracelets out wow. to the girls at um, Military Magnet Academy. So, like I said, I just wanted to show girls that they are role models and, and positive people here yeah. in Charleston who really care and want to make sure that they have some good leadership. That's so important because I know when I was going to school, and I have a lot of p people who are my age who say the same thing, is that we never really had that connection to community, much less community le leaders who were coming in. I bet you that means a lot to them. Like, what kind of reactions do you get? And yeah, like they that? were excited. Um, you know, like, I, I using the base now at the school that I actually teach at, so um, they are already familiar with me, and then they know that I'm always working hard to just try to help them in any way, in any capacity. Because, yeah. like, uh, we have a leadership class, and every year I go in and talk to them about just different issues and concerns and just motivating them. Mm -hmm. So um, the more that I do, they're like, thank you so much, um, mm -hmm. you know, Ms. Duggins. Um, you know, we really appreciate you taking this time. You know, you don't have to do this, but, you know, we're grateful. And, I mean... Even the days after, they're still like, you know, because I may not uh, teach them every day mm -hmm. or encounter with them, but just passing them in the hall, they're like, hey, Ms. Douglas, and just to see their warm smiles, yeah. know that they were appreciative of the efforts that I've done. Yeah, so that is, it feels great. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. I just think any little gesture like that, and hopefully other artists who are out there who have a position of privilege or power can do this, that sort of same thing, because I know that... The reactions I get when I give books to students and stuff, they just really, really love it. And I think we all have that power to do that. So I really admire you for Thank you. for yeah doing that. Um, I also really admire the fact that you are so involved with, with, uh, with, with Charleston Pride, so yes. Char Charleston Black Pride. Yes. So I'm not going to speak for you because <laughs> I, know, I know the answer, but somebody out there is going to be like, why does, there, why does there need to be a Charleston Black Pride? Like yes. Somebody's going to ask that. That has been the million dollar question. <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so originally I was a part of Charleston Pride, which is an LGBTQ organization, um, but I still felt that uh, my role was not capturing people who look like me. Mm. And I'm a strong stickler for representation matters. Yeah. 
Right on. And so being with that organization for a year and a half and doing the work that I really wanted to do and to reach the people that I felt that we needed to reach mm-hmm. of color, um, I just felt within myself limited. And I knew that I'm a strong leader, so if I'm going to stand and represent anything, I need to make sure that I'm actually doing it and not just speaking or have it written on paper. So I was very uncomfortable in the position that I was in, and I didn't feel that I was reaching the people that I needed to reach. So that's where um, Charleston Black Pride originated from, me walking away from one organization feeling like I was not representing the people that I stood in front of stages or spoke to and said that I am. Yeah. Um, right so on. starting Charleston Black Pride um, was because I've seen Black Prides and heard of other Black Prides in other cities. Mm. And I saw how they function. And I saw that they were more than just hitting the social needs of the community. Um, I wanted Charleston Black Pride to be more educational. Um, I wanted it to be more like upliftment, empowering, mm-hmm. empowering, um, cultivating people, you know, just really letting people of color know that the LGBTQ of color, we're all a part of the African-American tribe. Yeah, right you on. know, we're, we're not uh, just a subset where we are black first Mm -hmm. or we are of color first and um we want to make sure that we are accepted as well Mm -hmm. so um taking that strong leadership came with a lot of mixed feelings from some communities but i've overall i've gotten a lot of support i think because people have already seen me and knew that i was true to who i am yeah right. you know i walk in my truths and um, I didn't hide it from day one of me coming here 10 years ago. Yeah. Even through my poetry, um, everything, every, every aspect that I've been within the city of Charleston, I've let it be known who I am and what I stand on. Yeah. And so um, I know that helped to encourage others to step out in the forefront and um, join forces with me. Yeah. And so I'm thankful for my team because we wouldn't have been able to do the work that we've been doing now going on two years Mm -hmm. um, that we've done. You know, we've been in a lot of different spaces. We've been able to partner with great organizations, Mm -hmm. um, Palmetto Care um, for HIV AIDS awareness. Um, So it's like I I want to be able to highlight a lot of the same struggles because they seem to separate us. But we have a lot of the same struggles that – people who are African-American have or people of color have, even in relationships. You know, people think that the LGBTQ community are different. And when you start to have the conversations, they're like, wait a minute, you have the same issue? Yes, because we're people, we're human beings. You know, we just may love someone who is of the same, you know, and the same gender. So that's all that it's really uh, the difference. Mm-hmm. But other than that, we, we are doctors, teachers, lawyers, police officers, family-oriented. Uh, um, you know, we may go out, party. We may be educators. We may, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Living life. Humans. Yeah, humans. Yeah, humans. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, um, it's really in- in- interesting to think about all the different power structures that are there that we're all doing this work for and trying to break down and at least make make pe- people aware of mm-hmm. and give them the choice to break things down. But I think it is important for people like you to step into their power, you know, like yeah. you've been called to be a leader, to do this, and particularly for that community that I think there's so much education um, that needs to happen for people who are not in that community, yes. you know? Um, and it's really sad, but also <laughs> it just makes people like me want to work more. You know, pe- yeah. people like, like you want to work more because there's so much. Yeah, because the voices happen. need to be out there. The stories need to be shared. Yeah. yeah. So it's like um, I bring a collection of voices, but I'm not. I'm just from one perspective. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's why I tell people all the time, get to know someone else. Step out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Have a conversation, and I mean, you'll realize how much in common you all are 
Yeah. But you just may not share that. Yeah. You know, so, um, you know, like I say, um, I'm, I'm just thankful for the leadership and the tables that I've actually sat at and the tables I've been able to build. Mm -hmm. Because all in all, um, they're very useful and they're needed, especially during the times that we're actually living in now. Yeah. And especially mm -hmm. in Charleston. Yes. You know, city that I love v very much. But. Um, yeah, there's a lot of work here. Yeah, it's um, a lot of work. We, yeah. we're, there, there's still uh, an invisible tribe here. Mm. Yeah. There's still hidden agendas here. Oh, yeah, yeah. And um, I feel that we're in 2021 now, 21st century, and we're still dealing with slavery. We're still dealing with segregation. Yeah. We're still, yeah. you know, dealing with police brutality we're still dealing with a lot of hurt mm -hmm. and a lot of uh there's healing that still needs to be done mm -hmm. in a city that's the holy city so this is the thing that i always was looking at the counter i said um it's different for me i'm coming from brooklyn new york you know mm -hmm. where um i didn't realize how much freedom i had yeah until i came to charleston and i mean it's like almost a time warp yeah. I went into and I've seen a lot of people who are still stuck in that slavery or enslaved mentality. Mentality. And I just feel that, you know, um, with more discussions, I'm hoping that we can change mindsets. Yeah. And um, and then, too, I. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is amazing. And I have always been not surprised I, I shouldn't say surprised at how many pe people are unwilling to just say that they denounce you know ra race racism or they just yeah denounce white white supremacy um, right i mean it's it's literally just saying the words it and is people still won't, won't they still won't, won't say it, it. I, and, and yeah and that, that keeps enough. the racism here yeah yeah and i mean all kinds of talks that's why i said stop writing it down on paper mm -hmm. and if you're gonna you know talk the talk you have to walk the walk yeah. and i've noticed that um it's always like somewhat sugar-coated or not spoken of yeah. but the years are passing and it's not being resolved yeah and those that are underrepresented we're still facing the raft of what's not being spoken what's not being addressed and what's interesting too is, um, and th th this is this is great. <laughs> this is why I love, <laughs> love having you here. What's interesting too is even when we do say it, people still don't really want to look at it. It's almost as if it's like this monster in the room, and we're like, "Hey, look, th there's a monster in the room." Right. They're like, "Okay, cool." So anyway, you know, let's let's ho hold hands. I'm like, "No, we have to kill the monster." <laughs> like, yeah. So it's it's really um, a lot of us, especially black art artists, we are specifically telling you what to do or just telling you what is out what, there. What is out there yeah, or what, what we're what facing. Like, okay, um, my second poetry book, yeah. Black Coffee, No Sugar, No Cream. This yeah. was the politically correct, this was the uh, <laughs> activist side of me, the feminist side of me to let the world know that yes, we both have issues on both sides of the table, but there needs to be called out on some things that we're still experiencing. Mm -hmm. You know, I felt that the my book was created because the ancestors were talking through me right to on. say, Regina, we need to use you right now. Mm -hmm. You can carry out a words, a words to people who are listening to you. Right on. So um, when I started to perform um, a lot of the poems in that book, I saw some people kind of, you know, sit back in their chair. <laughs> some people probably wanted to run out of the place. Yeah. But, you know, I was glad that they stayed. Yeah. And then I'm, one thing about me, I'm an educator. So I'm willing to talk to anyone after and explain to them more in depth if that's what they want to do. But you have to be willing to listen. Yeah. And I'm hoping that you will go and make some changes. Yeah, right you on. know, because um, if it keeps falling on deaf ear, then we will never move forward. Yeah, that is true. And it can't just be, um, this is just from my experience, mm -hmm. when I do poems about white, white supremacy or, you know, or racism, it can't just 
be the poem and that's it. You know, like we are, we are right. attempting we're, we're, to um, inspire, like change and, yeah. and things like, you know, like that. So that's the thing that I run, run up against is, you know, when I am, am chosen to write about <laughs> some, something, um, yeah, the reactions to it are really in, interesting. Like I wrote a yeah. poem about how I believe that the angel oak tree might have been used for, mm -hmm. for lynchings at right. one, one point. And, and I get like so many things about, oh, this poem is, is really, really beautiful. I'm like, well, actually, it's, it's, it's sad. <laughs> no, right. <laughs> it's well, I'm talking about strange trauma. fruit here. Yeah, yeah, And trauma. I'm really, it's yeah. trauma, you know, and yeah. it's not addressed. No. And it's, it's another hidden agenda, you yeah. know, and I want change. Yeah, right on. You know, and, and sometimes we have to speak it in like vivid colors for others to understand yeah. because we don't want to come off that we're attacking people because mm -hmm. that's where we've been misconstrued a lot of time because if we are forceful but you have to just say it yeah just say it just call it and say it and yeah. i mean my thing is we're not blaming you for your ancestors but we have to make some changes because it is still carrying along because you've lived that mm -hmm. you didn't know better yeah, you know, yeah, you didn't, yeah. you know, this is something that was embedded within you unless you're going to make the change to kind of pull that root up out of you. Yeah. But until we address the issue, we can't say that we're trying to, uh, sh you know, lessen the divide. Yeah, right on. You know, and like I said, I, I walked through the streets. I've performed in a lot of different places here in the city of Charleston and just throughout uh, South Carolina. And I'm like. I'm kind of appalled. I'm like, wow, it's a beautiful, like Charleston, South Carolina. We're known for <laughs> the tourists, you know, mm -hmm. great food, great, you know, come city to visit. But the underlying of it all, there's still a lot of pockets of people feeling invisible. Yeah. And that's what true love is in my mind is seeing a person for their, for seeing them as whole. Right. And, um, and I love this city wholly. Yeah. Like, I love the best parts about it. I mean, you will find, find me, maybe not now, but at a fancy restaurant, you know, mm -hmm. get, getting a drink that's, that costs way, way too much. Right. And I really enjoy it. Yeah. You know, but you'll also find, find me um, in, in neighborhoods that don't have, uh, you know, the, the, the support that they need. You'll find me in neighborhoods that are flooded. You know, right. you'll find, find me also at the Gilliard Center. Yeah. It, it's just... You know, you love all parts of the city, and yes. it isn't good or bad. It's just the whole city. Um, so it's, I, I think it's not truly loving this place if we just like the, like the touristy parts exactly. and then we leave. You know, like you really have to enjoy this whole city. And I don't know, the history of the city is... Is it's amazing. Is absolutely... It is amazing. And I mean, and I'm still wonderful. not... I haven't seen it all, you know, mm -hmm. because it's so much historical uh, aspects to learn um, that, you know, our ancestors came through Sullivan. I, so, you know, I go there, you know, and I mm. sit and I, and, and being an empath, you know, so just mm. being there, I'm like, I can feel what ha possibly transpired years ago, yeah. centuries ago, yeah. because it's still within the air. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and it's still within reading and knowing that, oh, wow, this is what happens. So your mind automatically takes you back to those moments of saying, what really happened? Yeah. Yeah. And I've been thinking about trauma a lot and how you know, we keep passing trauma down. Mm -hmm. um, and, it's, and it's even without us wanting to, it's just sort of an energy there. So I think a lot of the work that people like you and I are doing is to try to stop that cycle mm -hmm. or at, at least sort of deal with it so that it's dealt with sort of in a healthy way. Because, I mean, we're talking about mental health. I mean, there's just so many ways that this uh, affects us. You yeah. Know, moving and forward. as they would say, generational curses. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and and if we don't address it, it, all it does is get swept under the table till it comes back. But usually when it comes back again, it's that much intense. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's why we need to have these discussions, even within our own families. Oh, yeah. You know, there's yeah. so much that, like, think about a trip to the doctor. They ask you, well, do you know 
how many, you know, your wife just had a, a baby. Mm -hmm. Do you know people on this side, did they have a cancer or did they have this disease or did they have, you, we don't sometimes know how to answer that mm -hmm. because our family really haven't sat us down and said, okay, so-and-so died from this or so-and-so struggled with this or, mm -hmm. you know, so we're kind of like picking up from where we are, but this is in our DNA, this is in our genetics. So we're passing this seed to the next generation yeah. and we don't even know how to heal them because we haven't spoken about it. Yeah. yeah, We haven't really found out what our roots are. We're still defining African-American. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's... <laughs> <laughs> I really, um, I, I could listen to you speak. <laughs> like, I mean, it's, it's, it makes sense that you are a leader, you know, because um, I really like your voice and everything. Thank and just, you. I don't know, I, I just want you to, to I, know I appreciate that it. and I listen. hope people tell you that you know I, yeah I, I and it's hard for me to take it because I feel I accept it but I feel like I was here for this purpose mm -hmm. yeah so when you're purpose driven and sometimes when people do say that like it's kind of hard for me to understand mm -hmm. yeah. because I feel like I'm just, just doing what I'm supposed what to do. do yeah yeah you know it's like, like brushing um, your teeth like it's what you do right <laughs> yeah. it, it's it, it even goes back to me not Walking in, like we're talking, walking in my truth. Um, I have a doctorate, mm -hmm. you know, and I don't go by that or use those letters and acronyms all the time because I don't want anyone to feel uncomfortable. Okay, yeah. You know, I, I'm still in the 10% ten percent elitist, as they will call it. Mm. Um, and I don't feel that way because I know where I came from. Yeah. You know, and I know that there are still so many people still there, but I use it to help to educate them to say that they can achieve it. Mm -hmm. Right on. You know, but I don't have to use it in a in the sense of showing like, oh, I'm better than you, or I forgot to struggle, or I don't know. Yeah. I mean, because it gets taken so many ways, and people use it against people to start to think that, oh, you know it all. No, I am no way in no shape, form, or fashion perfect. Learning. We're all I am still learning. I learn from my students every single day. Yeah, yeah. I and I learn from, and I love it that I'm learning from people because there are so many people, I, I'm, I'm proud to say I'm 43 years old. And yes, the experiences that I've had, but I know of people who are 15 that have had experiences that I can never fathom. Mm -hmm. So who's the more educated person? Yeah, yeah, and that's a How humbling. do we measure education, uh, you know? Yeah, and that's a humbling thing to um, be a teacher, edu you know, an educator, and, and to tell them, like, hey, like, you all are teaching me. You're teaching I, me. Yeah, because that, and, that happens and, a lot. And I'm, and I'm not ashamed to say that. And I've told my students, no, I don't know, but I will look it up, or you research it and bring it back and teach me. I'm here to listen. Yeah. I'm here to learn from you all. So, you know, when you can be able to do that, now it's like your students becomes the teacher. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And they they're always teaching me about all types of things. It's mainly um, like lingo and uh, <laughs> yeah. TikTok. I'm like, you know, <laughs> um, but <laughs> but anyway. OK. Yeah. yeah. So. 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 Yeah. Before we wrap up. Yes. Um, I just want to know something about you that. Other people might not know, you know, like so just like I a love, hidden, pa pa a yeah. hidden passion or something like that. I love gospel music. OK. I am very strong in my faith. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's helped me through a lot of trauma. Mm -hmm. um, I used to sing a lot, and I haven't. Oh, I didn't know, know that. Yeah, I haven't sang in a long, okay. not a long time, but I mean, like, sing performing. Sing. Okay. Yeah, wow. I used to be in concert choir when I was in high school. I've been on church choirs. Um, but I, I still, in that, because... It deals with a lot of emotions mm -hmm. when I sing. So that's probably why I don't do it as often. Okay. But um, poetry is just reading, and I can just speak it. I, I think I've gotten more comfortable with that than singing okay. in public. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, All right. But yeah. So, so, so I guess we shouldn't be surprised if you come out with a <laughs> gospel album like <laughs> You know, like have have an album out, have bu books out, just do it. You know, I'm just, you I'm, know. I don't know. I, I really don't know what what's next. Yeah. You know, and I'm thankful for that. Okay. Yeah. You know, um, I just completed my third book in September yeah. during this pandemic. 
Okay. I was able to um, talk about some things that people might not have known about me. Mm -hmm. And um, New York Styles, What Time Is It? is the name of the book. New York Styles is my dance group um, oh. that I had started when I was 12 and um, working with you. So it all ties back. Mm -hmm. um, and that was during a time in my life that I was dealing with a lot of childhood trauma. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to save um, the girls. And I mean, I felt that I, I don't know, I just always felt that I was older. You know, and I wanted to save them from what I experienced. Okay. But while I say I was saving them, they winded up saving me from myself because I was started to do things that um, could have been damaging mm. to who I am. So they kept me busy and I was always trying to make sure that they were safe. Okay. So there would be 15 to 20, 25 girls all in my living room just teaching them how to dance doing talent shows, so that empowered me and kept me focused um, until I was 18 and, of course, you know, graduated, went to college and continued on my journey. So what I did was uh, this book was to tell that. So I did a nonfiction book and kind of straight, it added some poetry pieces in it because oh, that's, that's, that's always a part. But, that's yeah, cool. it's, it's, it's really, it really was a good book, and I'm glad that during the pandemic I was able to slow down a little bit, even though I ran two elections but yeah <laughs> only two it's yeah. only two right but i was <laughs> my mom was able to settle down while i was going through all of that and um be able to share that story now okay with my readers that is cool yeah yeah we will put a link to that book sure. um under the video here um anything else you'd like to say before we wrap up um you, you want to sing you wanna... no okay <laughs> <laughs> i just want to say thank you for this opportunity yeah i um, just so grateful, and um, I just want people to know that I'm only fighting for those who felt that they didn't have a voice. Mm -hmm. And I want them to be reassured that they can come to me anytime, no matter what it is, and I will fight with them yeah. so that they can feel that they are loved. Thank you for doing that work, because that's really important work. You're and and. Yeah, there's so many people out there who don't feel love or don't feel like they have a resource. So, um, yeah, thank you for that. You're welcome. All right, so this was great, a, a great episode. I'm tongue-tied. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you all for tuning in to another episode of Raising the Volume. See you next time. I get scared sometimes. But as I always say, it's okay to be afraid. As long as you face the fear. And keep moving forward. Wherever you are in life, count on the name trusted in insurance for over 70 years. Blue Cross Blue Shield of South Carolina.